All right, boys and girls. Saw a post earlier. Someone mentioned they were just gonna throw rotors at it for a wheel shake problem at highway speeds. You don't throw parts at it. Pretty much everything has a way to be tested. And if you suspect that you might have a rotor problem, either because of brake pulsation or uh, steering wheel shake or something like that, there's a way to test it. Um, this is not a GTO. This is a 2002 Sentra with like 100,000 miles on it um, that we've just got lying around the shop. One of my coworkers is working on it. He's just done a front brake job using our Pro Cut on car brake lathe um, and left the wheels off. So, what we've got here is a brake rotor run out gauge. Um, this is also the same tool that's used for setting uh, backlash setting backlash and a differential and it, it, it's really simple it's just you got a dial indicator there and vice grips and this flexible arm that locks and unlocks so I'm going to start by putting it making sure that I'm parallel to the surface of the rotor uh, you got to have some preload so you've got your room to go and we want to make sure that we're perpendicular to the rotor surface, about an eighth of an inch or so in at the top, and we're going to take our first measurement. If I can get my tool tight. All right. So we've got it zeroed out, and I've got lug nuts on. I'll turn it a little bit so you can see got lug nuts on it tightened down out of spec and you don't have to take brake pads off or nothing to do this you just got to take the wheel off and then we're just going to spin it and watch our needle give it one full rotation and it looks like we've got a little bit less than a thousandth of run out on the outer surface you do the same thing for the inner surface I'm just going to show you one side uh, but our outer surface and that's good um, zero would be perfect um, but anything less than a thousandth you're really not going to feel so now we're going to go ahead and if you're really chasing a problem, you're going to want to do this at several points on the assembly. Um, so we're just going to move it in on the rotor. And hopefully I've got room there to... No, not going to clear. And that's the other thing you run into. Sometimes you can't get in close enough to take the measurement you want. And again, make sure that we're true and perpendicular. Make sure that's tight. Zero out the dial. And we'll run it again. And we've got about the same thousandth. Now already I could tell you, because think of it like a lever, any hub run out is gonna get magnified by the distance between the center of the hub and the edge of the rotor. And we've got the same reading on the inside, so we're good. Uh, this rotor is true, it's not going to pulsate. Um, now I'm going to come down here on the hub, the, ed the rim of the hub, and I've got all this cleaned up and got all the, the gobbledygook on it. And if, okay, drop the camera down. Okay. There we are, and we're set up on the edge of the hub here. Uh, this car has a pressed-in bearing, just like the rear on, rears on our GTOs. Um, so this is a, just a pressed-in um, outer stub that the CV bolts into. It's not a unitized bearing like our fronts. So this is a good place to get a feel for the wobble of the bearing. But everything's got to be clean, so we'll just spin it. 
Might not be as clean as I thought. Looks like there's a little bit of pitting in it. That's giving us some false readings. But you get the basic idea that this is what we're checking. And on a hub that's got enough surface area to get in and check, um, you'd run it here too and spin it on the on the rotor hat. You take the rotor off, and the more persistent your problem, the further in depth you want to go. But these are the basic steps, and then you just gonna clear. If I can get it to clear the stupid. And this will check for deformation of the rotor hat. But it can be tricky to get them in here like this. And again, the surface has got to be good and clean. And your tip's got to move freely because it's going to be real sensitive to every little thing. But long story short, this particular hub has about a thousandth worth of run out in it. And it's going to be good. It's going to track straight down the road. It's not going to give us any NVH problems, either while braking or otherwise. And it's taken me, what, six minutes to do this, uh, not counting removing the tire, and I was talking, which means it took me twice as long as it should have. Any questions? I got answers.